Hi, I'm Carl, and welcome back to SMA. Well, this week we're going to try something a little bit different. So, I had talked about how my son had written a movie, and we started a video production company. And so, in that vein, one of the things I wanted to start doing was talking more about movies themselves, because movies are a really important part of our lives. In my family, uh, I grew up with movies. My mom was a big movie fan. Um, and I pass this love on to my kids, which is part of the reason why I think my son wants to write movies and make movies. So I figured we would start off with the biggest movie going today, and that is The Batman. The Batman is a movie uh, directed by Matt Reeves, and it stars Robert Pattinson as the title character, The Batman. When we're looking at this movie, the first thing I would say about it is, in a lot of ways, this is the the least Batman movie that I've seen. It is way more David Fincher uh, than it is Batman. This is basically a serial killer out there and a detective out to, to track him down. This feels very much like Seven or Zodiac. It's really in that vein, and I dug that vibe. I thought that was an excellent way to go with it. And again, there are so many versions of Batman, it's good to do something that stands alone on its own is something different. Okay, so let's talk about Robert Pattinson as the Batman. I thought he was a very strong Batman. And this is a very Batman-oriented movie. There's very little Bruce Wayne. It is largely Batman. One of the things I really liked about this was I liked the voiceovers in the beginning. Uh, Batman kind of giving you the layout of, the, of Gotham and what he's been doing and all, all those kinds of things. I'm a huge uh, Frank Miller, Dark Knight Returns, and um, a Batman Year One fan, and they're very big into the voiceovers, and I liked the voiceover. I liked getting into Batman's mentality. I thought it was a very unique thing that they did movie-wise, and I was glad they did it. Uh, I've heard a lot of talk about the emo version of Batman, that he had the, the black makeup around his eyes. Uh, when he was Bruce Wayne, that he because he, he had the black makeup on underneath the mask, and then when he become Bruce Wayne, he wouldn't always take the, the makeup off right away. And at first, it sat a little weird with me, but the more I've thought about it, the more I've kind of looked at different things about it, I kind of liked it. Because I think one of the things that they're trying to say in this movie is in a way that other movies have hinted at and talked about a little bit, but this was directly in your face saying, Bruce Wayne doesn't really totally exist. It is mostly the Batman. And when he becomes Bruce Wayne, he's still lingering on Batman. In fact, one of the things they say in this movie is that people haven't even seen Bruce Wayne in a long time. And so that whole, you know, he's wearing the, the eye makeup thing afterwards, it really kind of fits the tone for what Matt Reeves was going for. Catwoman is played by Zoe Kravitz. Um, I really like... One, I like Zoe Kravitz in general. I think she's a, a very good actress. Um, we've been watching Big Little Lies, and she's really good in that. Plays a completely different character, and I really like that when you see that out of actors. In, in this version of Catwoman, I feel like we got a more in-depth look at who Catwoman is. Um, we got an idea of a little bit more of her life, and I enjoyed that. I, I, I'm glad that we spent time with her in a way that we didn't spend with Anne Hathaway in The Dark Knight Rises. Jim Gordon, I really wasn't as big on. Uh, Jim Gordon is played by Jeffrey Wright, and I, I felt like he was basically Batman's sidekick. In a lot of ways, he was almost like the Robin of this movie. And we didn't really understand why he signed up with Batman. The movie starts two years into Batman's run. Gordon and Batman have been together for a while. They're friends. But we don't know anything about why Gordon decided to decide with with the Batman. Um, why he he's basically turns his back on the cops. I, I think we were supposed to believe that because the cops are corrupt. That's why he's there. But I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of that. I, I really like when they give us more of Gordon's background, his life. Um, in, in Batman Begins, there's a, a line in there about where they're asking... Another cop is asking him if he's going to, to snitch. And uh, Gordon is like, I'm no snitch. Besides that, in this town, who would listen anyways? Um, and I think that line gives you an idea of why Gordon 
followed Batman in the Nolan trilogy. I would have liked to have something like that in this one. The Riddler, played by Paul Dano. I thought he was a real strength of this movie. Um, I'm not super familiar with Paul Dano. I've seen him in a few things. Um, and in most of this movie, we don't even see his face. And because I didn't know the actor, and I didn't know um, really what he looked like, having him in the mask for a large part of this movie made him scarier, I think, than had we seen him. And I really like that, that take on it. Um, you know, they'd have him in the mask with these glasses on, and I thought that was a very cool way of handling it. I also liked sort of his motivation, um, that he was this person who felt like he was really smart, deserved better, and all these people in Gotham who are supposed to be taking care of the, the people were doing really underhanded things and stealing money and all these kinds of things. And he wanted to show them, he wanted to bring them to the light of the world so they would stand trial, basically, in the, in the court of public opinion for their actions. And I thought that was a very strong motivation. I really liked it. I thought he was excellent. I liked that when he finally did get to see his face, that he was actually kind of, a, frankly, looked a little bit like myself. Like, he's this nerdy kind of little guy who is doing um, these terrible things. And, you know, in the movies, so often, the, the bad guys are really scary. You know, they, we make these big, huge actors be these scary bad guys. But in real life, it's not like that. You know, in real life, like, there's nothing particularly scary about Hitler. Ed Gein, the famous um, uh, serial killer who they based Buffalo Bill on and the killer in Psycho, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it was an old guy, a little guy. Like, so when... We finally see the the Riddler, seeing that he's not this like scary, disfigured, hulking guy, but really just an accountant. Like I thought that was a really cool twist. I really liked that. The Penguin. I have mixed feelings on the Penguin. So I really thought Colin Farrell did a good job as the Penguin, or as 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 acting. I thought was really strong. I liked the character. Um, but I have no idea why he was the Penguin. Like, he just felt like another mobster in any movie to me. There was nothing particularly penguinish about him. Uh, and I thought that was a little weird. They could have left off the name Oswald Cobblepot. He could have been just another gangster. And I'd have been totally fine with it. Um, when you say penguin, you expect something. You know, there, had, there should be something that is at least relates back to the penguin himself. Again, good good performance. I like the character. Just wasn't Oswald Cobblepot. Alfred in this movie is played by Andy Serkis. And in general, Andy Serkis does a really good job. Um, I, th I found his Marvel character to be a, a claw, to be a little over the top, but then it's Marvel. What do you expect? That's kind of their thing. What we saw of Alfred in here, I liked. But I don't know that we got enough Alfred, which is kind of weird because it's a three-hour movie. Um, and I already said that we didn't get enough Jim Gordon. But Alfred spends most of his time in this movie off screen. They did have a little thing in there about um, Alfred taught him, taught Batman how to fight, which is interesting. But I'm not sure, like, I, I don't know that I can imagine... Somebody who fights as well as the Batman, learning it from any normal human being, even like a special forces guy or something like that. Like, Batman kicks a lot of butt in this movie. Like, I gotta believe that he had specialized training that is just not available to 99.9999% of the people in the world. And so Alfred being the trainer, I thought that was a little weird. Um, I thought the scenes between them were pretty strong. There's a scene at the end, towards the end, and I, I, I don't want to do too much in the way of spoilers, but there's a scene in the end that kind of reminds me a bit of the scene at the end of Spider-Man 3 uh, between Harry and his butler and Bruce and his butler, and they both felt a little like, you know, probably shouldn't have kept this information down low for this long, like... You kind of did a bad job there, and that, that sat a little funny with me. The Batmobile. The Batmobile's gotten a lot of play in this in the, the, the conversation around the Batman. 
and I like the Batmobile in this. I thought it was fine. Um, I thought the car chasing was really excellent. I really like the way they shot it. Um, the way it turns out is a little bit weird because Batman's destroyed a bunch of town, bunch of the town, and possibly having people die in this big car chase, and he doesn't even get the guy who he thinks he's going to get. So that was a little weird. But the Batmobile itself was fine. The only issue I have with the Batmobile is that because it's movies and it has to be big and over the top, like they've got it as a muscle car. It's got like a jet engine in the background and it's, you know, making this big loud noise and stuff like that. I kept thinking in the back of my head, there's probably like a Tesla that would just go shooting right by it because electric cars are just faster than gas powered. So that's my own thing. Uh, that, that just, just a side note. One other thing I want to say before we move on is... Batman in this movie acts kind of like the Terminator. Like, he is coming in heads on, and people are shooting guns at his chest. And, like, I get that he's wearing the bulletproof armor. They show that in the trailers and stuff like that. But his face is pretty exposed. Like, you would think that Batman would even would have the armor because he wants the armor to protect himself. But he would still be a little more ninja-like and not take the, take the bullets head on just in case, even on a ricochet, something hits you in the face. So, that's all. Maybe Batman could duck once in a while. Alright. Let's move on to a section I want to call Deeper Thoughts. And when I do some movie reviews, th this is the important part to me. These are the things that jump out to me, that I think about. Uh, I believe that every movie is not just telling you the story, the thing that's going on, but it's telling you something about how the creators of the, of the movie view the world. And I like to think about those things and talk about them. So, okay, so the Riddler in this movie is very similar to the Joker in the Joker movie, the the Walking Phoenix version of the Joker. And I'm not sure if the writers of this movie were thinking about that, but when I watch the movie, that's what, what I'm thinking, is that both the Riddler and the Walking Phoenix Joker, both of those movies are kind of talking about how the world isn't taking care of people. You know, in the in the Joker, um, walking, the walking Phoenix Joker, he couldn't get the medications that he needed and he couldn't get the, the help that he needed um, from a psychologist. That help was not available to him. And the movie seemed to be saying that a whole group of people is being forgotten. And I, I feel like this movie kind of had a similar theme, at least for the villain. And the villain felt left behind. He felt um, demoralized. He felt that the world had turned its back on him. He was a guy who was smart, who was a hard worker, who was trying to do the right things, but the world wasn't working for him. So one of the people who forgot about... Um, the Riddler character in this is actually Batman. In a lot of ways, we could say that Batman is a villain of this movie. So one of the big th plot points is that the Waynes had left behind, uh, I, I think it was a billion dollars, to the city of Gotham to help them rebuild the city and to do all these uh, renewal projects. But that money had gotten siphoned off by different mafia people and corrupt politicians, and suddenly the city uh, was falling apart. And very early in the movie, Alfred wants um, Bruce to meet with his accountants to talk through um, all the all the Wayne financial stuff. And Bruce hadn't been doing this. And Bruce asked uh, asked Alfred, he's like, "Why did you bring them here?" And he's like, "Because I know you wouldn't go to them." And so we get this idea in the movie that uh, Bruce has become so wrapped up in the Batman that he has lost sight of the things that Bruce Wayne should have been doing. And by doing that, he allowed these mobsters to take control and steal all this money and get more control and power in Gotham City. So in a lot of ways, through his own negligence, Batman causes a lot of the problems that happen. Early on in the movie, during that opening monologue, Batman says um, that he's been at this for two years and crime is on the rise. Why is that? You got a superhero on the streets. Why is crime on the rise? 
crime is on the rise, not because the Batman's not doing what he's supposed to be doing, but because Bruce Wayne isn't doing what he's supposed to be doing. That is the, the fatal flaw that Bruce doesn't realize. And that, so as we look at this in a bigger picture, Gotham City needs Bruce Wayne more in most cases than it actually needs Batman. If Bruce Wayne does what he is supposed to be doing, then the Batman's not needed. Now, of course, superhero movies, so we're going to get supervillains on occasion, we're going to get the Riddler, we're probably going to get a Joker, right? We get these bad guys, and when they show up, yes, we definitely need the Batman. But our everyday problems can be solved by everyday people. Granted, in this case, he's a billionaire, but the rest of the people weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing either. The mayor, the, the police commissioner, all these people were not doing the things that they were supposed to be doing. Our problems are solvable, for the most part, by regular people. Now, if you look at New York City, which is the, the basis for Gotham, when, when people were writing a lot of the stories that these things are based on, New York City was a terrible place. I remember growing up, you know, I'm in my 50s now, and so in the 80s, New York City was like the scary place that people would talk about. We had Bernard Goetz, who was a, um, a guy who rode trains, and he, he was basically, uh, I'm going to say this word wrong, vigilante. Vigilante. He was a vigilante. 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 We're going to go with that, right? And he shot these guys who mugged him, and he was sort of a hero for a while, he was, but he was also had a lot of issues. Um, so New York City was a scary place, and over time, people worked on it, and now New York City is a nice city to live in. Maybe not the city I would want to live in, but it's a place that people live very happy, very comfortable lives, and that wasn't done because we had Batman jumping around, beating up bad guys. It happened because we had normal people doing the things that they were supposed to be doing. We cleaned up the city. And in Gotham, it's the same way. Right? They need Batman to fight the supervillains, but they need Bruce Wayne to help with the everyday problems. During the movie, the word Batman isn't said very often. Whenever they ask him, what's, who is he? He doesn't say, I'm Batman. He says, I'm Vengeance. And I think that's a really interesting thing that, that they did there. That Batman is vengeance. Why is he out there on the streets? Is he there to clean up the streets? I think in his head he is. But in a lot of ways, he's there for, for vengeance. For the things that happened to him as a kid, he's there taking vengeance. He's taking vengeance on for the other people who can't defend themselves, right? He is, he is there not to fix problems, but to basically revenge problems. And I think by the end of the movie, we realize that was a mistake. Being vengeance is not a thing. I think, though, there's more to be said about that for us, right? I spend a lot of time on Twitter debating basketball. I love basketball. I like to discuss it. It's a thing I enjoy. And I get called a moron on a daily basis. And actually a lot worse than that. Um, I've had... I had a national sports writer make a very um, rude, sexualized comment to me and then block me, basically questioning whether or not Kawhi Leonard was healthy. And But that's the way we are in the world, right? We don't talk like we want to discuss things. Batman in this movie is vengeance. And I think for a lot of people, every day, we are vengeance. And like Batman... To solve our problems, we need to be less about vengeance and more about solutions, right? Calling each other names, getting angry about everything. We are loaded, cocked, locked, and ready to rock on any particular issue. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be who's a better basketball player. It can be what's a better movie, right? It, there's people who are going to war over... Far From Home versus The Batman. What's the better movie? And they're calling each other names about it. Like, these things don't matter. Calm down, right? We want to fix the world. We can't be vengeance. We have to be solution-based. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, and actually, I'll be honest with you, I did not come up with this point, 
my lovely wife who's sitting there off camera came up with this point and I didn't catch it. In the movie, and this is a little spoilery, so I, for that I apologize. Um, the Riddler talks about how he grew up an orphan, but nobody cared about him as an orphan. They cared about the poor orphan Bruce Wayne. He's like, he doesn't even know what it's like to be an orphan. He grew up a billionaire. He grew up in a mansion. He doesn't know what it's like to be in an orphanage. He doesn't know what it's like to be forgotten about society. And the whole movie sort of separates Batman from the rest of the world. You know, people, he shows up in public and people don't even know what he looks like. People are like, wait a minute, are you Bruce Wayne? Because unlike the other versions, he's just been totally isolated and separated. And that has been a mistake. And it, towards the end of the movie, you have people uh, basically nearly underwater drowning. And Batman's up above with other people. And he cuts this wire and jumps down to them and leads them out of this really dangerous situation. He's got a flare and he extends his hand. And it is a very different kind of Batman than we've ever seen before. But the important thing is Batman, Bruce, realizes that he cannot save the city by being above the city. He can only do it by being a part of it. And when he cuts that wire and he jumps down there, he chooses to be a part of the city. And this is the first Batman, pretty much in any version that I'm familiar with. I haven't read all the comics, but I've read a lot of them where we get the hopeful Batman. In a lot of ways, the end of this movie feels a lot like a Superman movie, where he's this beacon of hope. There's a, a scene where he's um, sitting next to a person who's, sitting, who's on a stretcher, and they're holding his hand and don't want to let go because Batman gave them hope. But he can only do that by becoming one of them. Billion, being the billionaire, being the superhero above the, the city, standing up there in the tall buildings, staring off in the middle of the distance in the sunset, that didn't get him to where he needed to be to be, to be that beacon of hope for people. All right, so I think that covers pretty much everything I have to say about the Batman. Hopefully you enjoyed this version of SMA, because I think I'm probably going to do more of them. I kind of enjoy doing these sorts of reviews. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please consider uh, subscribing to the channel. We'd like to start to grow this thing again. I've got something special coming up that I'm going to be dedicating to one of my other sons, my adopted sons, uh, Gabriel Baumeister, because he kind of gave me the idea in a roundabout sort of way. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you later. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye.